Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to be going over the room Cheese from Try Hack Me. It's labeled as an easy box. As long as you know how to do some research, I think it is. So, not much to say about it. Let's hop over and get into it. Okay, so here we are on Try Hack Me. As you see, we are in the Cheese CTF, and I do have the server up and running. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I've talked about take notes, take notes, take notes. But I don't think I've ever showed my notes for boxes when I'm doing them. So I've got them up here actually. And it's this small print, I understand. But basically I just kind of do my steps here. So you see we're gonna do in map first. We got our other stuff we're going through. So if you're not familiar, first thing I always do, and I highly recommend everybody do, is just do a simple in map scan. You grab that IP address here. And there are a ton of ports open. Don't get overwhelmed by this there's really only two ports we're going to be messing with and that is the http port on port 80 and the ssh on 22. i've already got the website pulled up over here sorry for the brightness this is just how they designed it and you can take some time to look around here kind of see what they have it's just got a bunch of different pictures of cheese not much else on it really the only interesting page is this login page so for that we're going to look at doing an sql injection and if you watched my last python video we created an automated sql injector tester and that's what we're going to use okay so here we are in my python script went ahead and changed the ip address over to the attack box set it for the login.php page made sure all of the ip references are changed i need to go in and put a switch in to where it can autofill that so we don't have to come in here and type it in every time. And this will be the one that does read from the payload.txt file. And I've added to that payload since I did the video creating this. So we will just do python3 sql.py and let it run. Okay, it's done. And it only found two possibilities and they're the same. The reason why I have them in here is the second one is capitalized because sometimes there could be a filter to exclude lowercase or uppercase. So having repeats of both in both formats does help. So we'll just come over here, paste that in. Alrighty, so we're in the admin panel. Now, if you're not paying attention, you will miss it. But as soon as we come in, if you take a look up here, PHP file equals panel. And if you notice when we click on orders, you see that it switches. So your first thought should be, okay, what can we do with this if there's anything we can do? Pass traversal, see if we can pull up a file. Put a couple of those in. Sure enough, we can get to the password file. Now there's another interesting thing that you can do with this is that is injecting commands into it. Now it won't be an option every time you find something like this, but just kind of keep it in the back of your head. So if you kind of want to know more about doing it, LFI, RFI using wrappers, that's the technique we're going to be using here. And everything I'm showing you on the browser, I'll leave a link down in the description for. So you can kind of go through this and talk a little bit about it. And the tool that it uses right here, this PHP filter chain generator, that's actually what we're going to grab and use to generate our code. So if you don't know about grabbing code from Git, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One way is to click up here. You have this link, you can download the zip, or if you've got Git installed on your machine, you can just have it copy it to your local machine. How do we use this and what are we feeding into it? First off, we need the command to send to the box so it can come back to us. We can get a reverse shell. For that, reverseshells.com. Seriously, bookmark this. You'll be coming to it a lot if you keep doing these boxes. Now for me, it automatically pulled my IP address, which on my Kali, I have it up here in the corner. I can see it. I'm going to use port 9000 for this. I've found that the netcat make FIFO option was the best one to work with. And I have it set to bin bash and no encoding. So all I'm going to do is copy this and we'll come over here. Okay, so here's our command that we're gonna run. We got Python 3, php payload.py, which is what we got from GitHub. And we're gonna use the chain option, and we're gonna put in single quotes here, and we'll open up with php system, I mean, we're gonna to wanna to run a command. And then this is the payload we got from the reverse shells website. And then all we do here is just close out that php call. And we're gonna pipe it to grep, and we want the second line that starts with php, so that up caret there is a regex that says, hey, we want whatever begins with this. And we're going to take that specific line and we're going to save it to a file php payload.txt. Okay, so we've got our payload. So now how do we actually get it to the site? First thing we need to do is get our netcat listener going on that port 9000. 
make sure you do that first. Then we're going to come back over here and we're going to use the curl command, capital S, and we're going to give it the address. And I'll show you where we got this from in just a second. But after the file command, we want to do the dollar sign, open parens, cat, and that text file we just made, close parens. So what that's going to do is it's going to extract the contents of that file we made first, load it into this URL, and then push it up to the website. Now where'd we get this URL at? Well, if you go back here, you see we got our target box IP address. Then we have the secret script.php in our file. So basically from this IP address to the equal sign is what we need. Anything after that is what we're going to abuse to get on. We'll come back over here, we hit enter, come over to our netcat listener. We now have a reverse shell on the box. Now, quick glance, you can see we don't have a user file with any flags in it or anything. And it can be kind of confusing what we need to do from here. I would recommend if nothing stands out and you can't find a database to find any useful passwords or anything, look over in the home directory. So do ls-al, you can see Comte. We have read and execute as group and as other, which is very bad. So we can actually change into Comte's directory and we can list out everything. We see we've got an SSH folder and we've got a user text, but only Comte can read. The most likely path to get onto the machine as Comte is going to be exploiting something with SSH. What do we do for that? Well, if we change into the directory, we do the ls-al again. You can see that there is an authorized key file and most importantly, other has write permissions to it. That's gonna be our ticket into the system. So how do we do this? First off, Let's change to the temp directory and then we'll get it set up. Okay, just to show you real quick, I do have this idrsa.pub file that I made when we did the break me box on my last video. I typically make an idrsa key set on Kali for boxes and just kind of keep that in an easy place for me to just kind of go and grab it whenever I need it. So basically what we're going to do is upload this to the server. Now, if you don't have an RSA, that's super simple. All you need is SSH keygen dash t rsa do that hit enter just accept your default prompts i wouldn't put in a passphrase for this you can if you want to and it'll make the files you need you'll get a dot pub and you'll get one that's just id underscore rsa that underscore rsa that's what needs to go into your dot ssh folder on your cali machine your dot pub that's your public key. Yes, what you would upload to machine to add into the authenticated keys file. And that's all you have to do. Since we have to leave this running so we keep our reverse shell, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start up an HTTP server on the quad eight port. And what that allows us to do is to come over here in our temp directory and we can just type wget HTTP our attack box IP address, the port, and then the file we want. And now that has saved it. Then all we have to do is type cat id rsa.pub. And we want to go to home compti.ssh.authorized keys. And then to test if it worked or not, we'll just turn that off. And type in our attack box address there. Just grab it from right here. And we should be able to connect as Compti. All right, there we go. You can grab the user flag, ready to move on to the next phase. Okay, so we're on the box as Compti. You got your flag. Where do we go next? My first default thing to do is anytime I get as a new user is sudo L to see if I have any permissions. Now, in this case, you can see without using a password, we can run the bin system CTL daemon reload, restart, exploit timer, start exploit timer, enable exploit timer. So if you're not familiar with what system CTL is, basically is that's one of the services that handles loading things when you start up the machine, when you log in and runs them in the background, make sure everything's good up and going. If you run like any web servers or anything, that's kind of what handles getting those things booted up at start time. So what is this exploit.timer? Well, first off, let's see if we can find where it's at. So we do find root directory name, exploit.timer, and then send any errors 
to the void. Okay, so this came back exactly where I thought it'd be in the slash etc slash systemd slash system slash exploit timer. Now in the system folder here, that's where you're going to have a lot of your timer and the other files that it's going to reference. We'll show you here in just a minute. And these are what system ctl systemd uses to load things in. Copy this and let's see if we can take a look at it real quick. Here we go. You see unit, description, exploit timer, Timer on boot sec equals, that's an error, install one by timers.target. Since I've worked on setting these up myself and doing things on my Arch system and on my Ubuntu, I notice automatically that this timer setting's wrong. I'm gonna set that to zero. From my experience with working with these, we also want active on unit active sec equals zero. And then we can control X and save. And then looking back up here, we have the restart option. Now, what exactly is this all going to do? Before we do that, let's take a look into the system folder and show you the other files that are there. So you also have these dot service files. And so you see they have the exploit.timer that we just looked at, and then we have this exploit.service. So what is that? Let's go back up to our nano command. Type in service, unit description, exploit service. What does it do? Type one shot, that means it's only gonna run once. It executes bin bash command to copy xxd from user bin to slash opt slash xxd, and it changes the sticky bit and executable on that file that it copied to. So basically this is taking a tool copying it into another directory, and then changing the permissions on it. So basically we're gonna run this, let it do its thing, and then we're going to try and exploit that SXD to be able to read files in the root directory. So just to show you, if we do ls op, there's nothing in there. We go up here, we copy this option, and then do sudo with that option. We list opt again, now you see we got XXD there. If we wanna see about those permissions that were added, there you go. Where the executable is supposed to be is now a sticky bit. So that means that anybody that runs this command is going to get executed as root user. So how are we going to exploit that? Well, if we come over here, if you don't have this side bookmark, bookmark it, gtfo bins.github.io. Ton of useful things on here. When I first started on Try Hack Me and into this, I was pretty much at this site every single day. So here, I'll leave a direct link to this file read. We're on the XXD page and it says, it reads data from files that may be used to do privilege reads or disclose files outside a restricted file system, which is exactly what we're going to do since we got the sticky bit. So we are going to create a variable L file and tell it what file to read. And then we're going to pass it into the XXD command. So here's our variable L file equals root slash root dot txt hit enter and then here's how we're going to execute it now we're going to specifically call that xxd copy that's in the opt folder so that's why we have to type out the full thing here we'll pass in that variable using the dollar sign which is what you have to do in bash programming or in shell when you make a variable and you call it you have to use a dollar sign and then we'll pipe it back into xxd dash r for read and we should be able to see the contents of the file so there we go we're able to read and we have the root flag Alrighty, so that was the cheese CTF from Try Hack Me. Sorry about my camera kind of freezing there. I didn't notice it because I've only got a one monitor set up right now. I am looking and getting a second one. Let me know what you think about the box below. What do you think about the walkthrough? Is there anything you would have done different? Something else you would have tried? Let me know. Be interested in reading your comments. And also, like I said, all the websites I showed, I'll leave down in the description. And I will add one more down there to a page showcasing how to use the SSH keygen to make those files in case you're not familiar with and you haven't seen it done in any other videos. So with that, hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time.